This is a math walkthrough video on how to calculate many of the uh, dimensions needed on a circular stair. Uh, in this case, we call it secondary, uh, meaning not a primary exit. So secondary dwelling, so it falls under a different code than the primary exit. Uh, this is a companion to fourth year carpentry apprenticeship. So I'm just going to walk through how the math um, is done here. So we're given uh, a few dimensions here. We have the total rise of the stairs. We have a desired rise of 175. Uh, a floor frame, which would be the framing up above the stairwell. Um, a combination of different numbers coming up to 284. A headroom clearance of 2050. So this is a code um, or an above code uh, clearance um, for headroom. Uh, we have the width of the stairs being 860. The total turn of the stairs being 90 degrees and the handrail being 44 millimeters wide. And on the sheet like this, uh, this is what we're looking for. A number of risers, treads, two, true rise, the degree for each tread. And then we're looking for radius one, radius two, which is to the, uh, the line of travel. So there's a code requirement there. Uh, the line of travel has to be 255 millimeters deep tread depth. The line of travel at R1 has to be 150 millimeters deep. And those are two code requirements um, that allow us to build a stairs at these dimensions. The other things we'll be looking for, arc length at R1. Uh, in this case, we just have the arc length as the tread, like I just mentioned, the 150, so I have to get above that. We will also be calculating a total arc length at each of these locations. One, two, three. And we're also going to get an estimate for the length of the stringer for this set of stairs. Stringer on the inside and the stringer on the outside. How Roughly how long those stringers would be. And also it asks here for the arc at inside of well and arc at outside of well. Um, basically, we're talking about a stairwell opening. Um, how far would we have to come here um, in this set of stairs before we can frame off above, frame off a stairwell? That's what those two are asking for. The arc at the well. Um, that's based on our headroom clearance and our floor frame. We'll get to that. So how do we begin with this? Step one, we find our true rise. This should be um, second nature for anyone in a fourth year carpentry apprenticeship. Total rise divided by the desired rise usually gives us a, um, a decimal in which we round up or down. So in this case, we were rounding down to 17. And then we take that total rise and put um, divide by 17 to get an actual rise per step. In this case, we have 177. And then we'll make note of the number of risers. So we went with 17 and the number of treads always being one less than the number of risers. Next calculation we can come up with is the number of degrees per step. Now that we have the number of treads, um, this st particular stair turns 90 degrees. So we'll divide that by the number of treads and we get five degrees, 37 minutes and 30 seconds per step. Okay, so we found um, these top four, and now we're going to focus on the radius at one, two, and three. And every math question usually will give you something different here. Uh, one of these, and that'll be enough to find everything else. So in this case, we are given a run or an arc length at R3 of 252. So we're going to have to recognize that what we have here is a triangle. Um, we know that each step is that um, that angle we just found out. Um, so we're going to dissect that a little bit to discover our radius length. So here we are, R3. We're going to try to find R3. There's that um, triangle I was talking about. This angle here being that 537.30. Um, and for any any time we do this type of um, segments of a circle, we need to bisect that angle to make sure that we get a 90 degree um, angle that we can do some trigonometry with. 
Uh, so that's what I've done here. I've cut it in half. Here's that same triangle cut in half. Cut that 5 degree 37 minute 30 second angle in half. It becomes 248.45. And the opposite um, the side of that at triangle becomes half of 252, which is 126. And now with trigonometry, where are you going to use, in this case, we're looking for the hypotenuse. If you can see that this is right angle triangle and the R3 would be the hypotenuse of that triangle. So we have a, have a hypotenuse, we're or we're looking for a hypotenuse, we have an opposite dimension and we have an angle. So O and H make, means we're using sine. Uh, if we cover up the unknown, which would be the hypotenuse, we get opposite over the side of the angle. So that's what we're looking at here. Opposite over the side of the angle, and it gives me 2568. So now we know that this dimension from the center of the circle all the way to the outside here is 2568. Um, from that, now we can get R1 and R2. So let's look at R1. R1 would just be R3 minus the full width of the stair. You'll see the math done out here. R1 and R3 minus the stair width. Stair width being a given on the sheet. Remember, stair width is given at 860. And that comes out to 1708, the radius of 1. R2, a little bit more involved. You have to know a few things to get this one. Um, R2, we just discovered R1. Let's go back up to our picture. We discovered R1, and what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, remember a few things from the code. So, we, first of all, this line of travel is taken a distance uh, 300 millimeters over from the center of the handrail. So, if we're calling this thick black line the handrail, um, we're going to measure over 300 from the center of that handrail to find our line of travel. Um, the other thing we need to recognize, so we have a, a thickness of handrail at 44. So if we're taking that from the center, um, we need to find out the dimension from the center of this handrail all the way back over to where R1 occurred. So half of this handrail is going to be 22 millimeters. And that gets us to the edge of the handrail. And then we this is just a memory from code. We have to recognize that we need 50 millimeters there. That's a code uh, requirement of clearance from the wall to the handrail. So we can go 50 plus half the handrail, which in this case is 22 millimeters, so 72 millimeters. And then we can add the 300 to get us to the line of travel. And you'll see the math done down here. R1 plus the distance to the center of the handrail plus 300. There's the 50, 22, and then the 300 gets us to 2,080 millimeters for the radius at 2. So now we have all of these answered. And let's now hop over and figure out what our arc length is at these three locations. Now for the purposes of, of this video, what I've done is um, I've uh, figured out the arc length here at R1 and the arc length at R2. We already have the arc length here. If you need to figure out the entire arc length, all you need to do is multiply the single arc length by the number of treads in that, that stair. So let's go down to the math here. I'm calling it the run. The arc length and the run or the chord, they're all the same thing. So the run has to meet, uh, at R1, the run has to be 150 millimeters to meet code. So what I do is just proportion it off. It's basically two triangles. Um, the one triangle that I can proportion this off against is the uh, R3 and 252. Let's go back up to this so you can see. So if you can visualize the big triangle heading out to R3, we're using R3, um, the dimension at the radius at 3, and we're also using the arc which was given to us at 252. And we're going to proportion that off uh, against this little triangle that we would have at R1 using what R1 and to find this. And we're going to do the same for, at R2 to find this here. Let's hop to the math. 
here we go and I've just done a ratio and proportion um, filled in R3 as we found R3 being 2568 so it'd be 2568 or 252 multiplied by R1 which is 1708 divided by 2568 gives us the unknown which is in this case run so we have 167.6 and we are above code so we are okay there we do the same for um, the run at R2, and we must meet 255 code at that location. So we do the same thing. We have the radius at R3. The radius at 2, which we discovered up here to be 2080. Multiply, cross multiply, then divide. X becomes 204.1. This does not meet code, so this is a set of stairs that would not um, meet the code requirements. It's good for us to know that. We'll continue with the math for the sake of doing the math. So we just discovered the run at each of these locations. Um, we can also call that the arc at each location or the chord. They're, in, they're interchangeable. So the next thing we need to solve for is the length of the inside stringer and the length of the outside stringer. So here we're, we're solving for the inside stringer. We're going to find the total arc at the inside, like I mentioned. And we're going to do that by taking the, the arc of one tread, or the run of one tread at that location on the inside stringer, which is at the R1 location, multiplied by the number of treads in this set of stairs, which we determined to be 16. And we get 2681.6. Okay, now we know the total run of the stairs at the inside. And we know the total rise, because we were given it in the beginning, um, was 3004. So the length of the stringer is going to be the total run, which is the arc. Um, the hypotenuse of the total run and the total rise. And this is what we're doing here with a bit of Pythagoras. And the inside stringer length becomes 4026.8. Okay, so now we know how long the inside stringer is. And we're going to do the same for the outside. So in this case, we are taking the arc at R3, which was 252. It comes up to 4032. Exact same calculation as above, just with the new run. Of course, the outside stringer is always going to be longer than the inside. You can see how much shorter the inside would be than the, the outside. So that's another way to check your work. If, you're, if your numbers come out and it doesn't look right, then something's gone wrong, al wrong along the way, I would say. Anyway, there's the math. There's your Pythagoras hypotenuse of the outside stringer, 48, 42. Okay, longer than the inside stringer. And if we go to our sheet... Uh, the last two things that are being asked of us are the arc at the inside well and the arc at the outside well. Let's talk a little bit about what this means now. This is a, a stairwell opening calculation. Uh, in previous years, you'll have done stairwell opening calculations on a straight set of stairs, a straight set of stairs with a landing. You would have done an L-shaped, you would have done a U-shape, and you would do what we call a cathedral entrance as well. It's like a split level. So in this case, you're going to figure out the stairwell opening for a circular stair. And what we're going to do, similar to how we discovered the uh, length of the stringers, is we are going to use a proportion, a ratio and proportioning, based on our vertical requirement. So in this case, to meet code, our vertical requirement will be the, the uh, headroom clearance. That's how much room we want from the nosing line um, to the underside of the floor above. And we're also going to add the 284 to get us to the to the upper floor. So these two numbers combined become our total total vertical height needed um, to to get to our stairwell opening where we can frame off the stairs above. Okay, and now let's uh, scroll down to the math. All right, so finding the arc at the inside of the well. So you're going to proportion it off against the needed vertical amount for the stairwell, like I just mentioned. I just told you it's the headroom plus the floor frame, two, three, three, four. And then we're going to do we're going to do is we're going to take this relationship here. So in this case, we have the vertical amount needed, two, three, three, four. 
um, is uh, has a relationship with the arc needed at the inside of the well um, in the same way that the unit rise has a relationship with the unit run at that location. So if we're at the inside stringer, our unit run was 167.6. And very simply, we are doing a cross multiplication and divide to solve for x with these four values, and we get a um, arc length for the well of 2210. Now we're going to do the same for the outside of the well. It's the same calculation. The only difference is we need to use the rise and run at the outside of the stairwell, which is a longer run. Same rise, longer run. Uh, same total rise for the uh, stairwell, okay, but it's based on the longer run, and then we find that um, we find that uh, comes out to be 33.23. So if you look here, the uh, stairwell arc at the inside would be 22.10. Stairwell arc at the outside will be 33.23. And that makes sense if you, if you sort of look at the picture and you can imagine, let's just say this is the inside arc of about 22.10. And the outside arc of 3,000 something, whatever it was, would take you around to the same point. So you would frame off the stairwell in a location um, at at similar to what what, what, we, what we'd call a radius line, so straight with the ninety degree to the stairwell run, and that becomes your stairwell opening. And now, if you're calculating a rough stairwell opening, um, you should add seventy five millimeters to those two dimensions, and give you a little bit of extra room for finishes such as drywall and whatever else you might need. Taking that number, the stairwell opening number, from a finished opening to a rough opening. Okay, so that's how we run through the math on these types of sheets. Again, it would be a secondary circular stair um, falling under the single-family dwelling code requirements of 150 millimeter minimum on the inside of the uh, tread and at the line of travel, 255 millimeters.